Greetings Planeswalkers and welcome to another one of our deck tech videos for the Comic Con Africa Easy Gaming Group Magic the Gathering Arena 2020 Championships. Today we're having a look at what they're calling Life Skills. This is a black white deck so Orzov Guild if you're into the guild names from Ravnica. Let's just go through this deck real quick. We've got an anointed chorister or two. One one creature is a one drop. Does have lifelink. Uh, has four mana and a white and you can buff anointed chorister to plus three plus three. Again this is an ability that you continuously can pay for so as long as you have the mana so in this case you would need 10 mana available, two of which would have to be white. You could pump this creature twice. So plus three, plus three, and then plus three, plus three again. Um, so it can get quite big and quite dangerous if you have the mana available. Light of Hope is an instant. You can choose one of three effects. You can gain four life, destroy target enchantment, or put a plus one, plus one count on a target creature. Speaker of Heaven. Now this card can be very, very dangerous. Um, later on, when you're building your own decks, you slap four of these in a deck and, you, and you've got a, an angel factory. Um, this creature is a one drop, one one with vigilance and lifelink. Vigilance meaning it doesn't have to tap when it attacks, so it's able to block on your next turn as well, uh, on your opponent's turn. It has lifelink, and uh, if you tap it, you create a 4-4 four, four white angel creature token with flying. Activate this ability only if you have at least 7 life more than your starting life total, and only any time you could cast a sorcery. So only in your turn, you can't do it in your opponent's turn. Um, but that's a fairly hefty hefty ability, especially in a deck like this that runs off of life gain. Uh, Shadow Spear is a legendary artifact. You can equip it to a creature, giving it trample and life link. It also has the ability to uh, cancel out hex proof and indestructible from other permanents your opponents control. Erebos's intervention, life gain, kill a creature at the same time, um, or get rid of somebody's graveyard, depending on what the X value is that you pay. Griffin Airy is a really cool card. It's an enchantment that you put down. Every time you gain three life at the end of that turn, you get to create a 2-2 white Griffin creature with flying. Revitalize. We call this card Sips because that's what it looks like. It looks like you're just sipping on a healing potion. Those of you who play Dungeons & Dragons will know all about healing potions. Uh, it's a two-drop instant. You gain three life, you draw a card. It's nice, especially in this deck. Boot Nipper is a 2-1 creature. It comes in for a cost of one and one black, uh, and when it does, you get to choose whether it has Death Touch or Lifelink, so it's your choice. Tavern Swindler, interesting card. 2-2 two, two creature for two, and pay three life, flip a coin. If you win the flip, you gain six life, so that's pretty cool. Unexpected Fangs is an instant combat trick to put a plus one, plus one counter and a Lifelink counter on a target creature. Notice these are counters, so they don't go away after the card resolves. The counters stay on the creature. Silver Smote Ghoul is a 3-drop, three 3-1 three zombie vampire. At the beginning of your end step, if you gain 3 or more life this turn, you can return Silver Smoke Ghoul from your graveyard to the battlefield. Tapped also, you can pay 1 in a swamp, sacrifice Silver Smoke Ghoul, and draw a card. So if you're pretty sure you're going to gain some life in a turn, you can sack this creature, draw an extra card, gain that life, put him back on the battlefield. Veto, Thorn of the Dusk Rose, this is a great card. It's so rare. It's a 3-drop for a 1-3 Vampire Cleric Legendary creature. Whenever you gain life, your target opponent loses that much life. You can pay 3 and 2 swamps, and creatures you control gain lifelink until end of turn. So if you've got a lot of creatures on the board, you suddenly hit that ability, everything gains lifelink, you swing in, gain all that life, and your opponent automatically loses that life, no matter how much damage they actually take from combat. Indulging Petition is a 3-drop, 1-4 flying lifelink. At the beginning of your end step, if you gain 3 or more life this turn, each opponent loses 3 life. Fates Fetters, Enchantment Aura basically stops other things from attacking you, but gains you four life at the same time. Back into a pious creature removal, but with a food token, the food token allowing you to gain life. Resolute Rider is a four drop, four two with some cool abilities. Pay either two black or two white or a black and a white, and he gets a lifelink until end of turn, and or three black and three white or one of each or whatever. Resolute Rider gains indestructible until end of turn. Then we have the big boys. We have the Baneslayer Angel. The girls, I suppose. Bane's the Angel is 5-5. Five, five. Flying first strike, lifelink, protection from dragons, protection from demons. I think that says everything. And then the Clackbridge Troll, which is an 8-8 eight, eight creature with trample and haste. But when it enters the battlefield, target opponent creates three zero one one white goat creature tokens. At the beginning of combat on your turn, any opponent may sacrifice a creature. If a player does, tap Clackbridge Troll, you gain three life, and you draw a card. So it's either sacrifice a creature, give me life, give me a card, or I'm going to hit you in the face for eight. 
Um, <laughs> it's an interesting card. In our mana base, 10 planes, 10 swamps, 4 scoured barons to gain a life every time they come in. Also adds either a white or a black mana and a temple of silence for the scry. Scrying, of course, meaning that when you scry, you look at the top card of your library and then decide whether or not you want to keep that card on top or put it on the bottom. Um, it just allows you to plan your next step. As always, the most important rule about any game of magic is read the card. You make sure you read it. It tells you exactly what it's going to do. So we're going to jump into some games. Hopefully we'll come up against some decks we can beat. <laughs> um, and uh, we'll take it from there. Same as the last one. In the meantime, here we go. Here we go with the life skills deck. Black white Orzov against Orange Mage. Well, that's an interesting hand of nothing. <laughs> nothing to trigger those. That's why we mulliganed. Um, that's better. I think we'll keep that and we'll ship a swamp. Because we can go that gain a life. Say hello to our opponent. Hello, Orange Mage. Ah, wow. So many things that are rotating. Let's go Death Touch. Because we'll unexpected fangs it in a moment, and then it'll get lifelink as well. So Death Touch and lifelink, that's pretty cool. Okay, maybe it won't. Not gonna play the Shadow Spear out just yet. I'm gonna trade. Just because I really don't want things around. Indulging Patrician is good. What is this? Belloth Pack Hunter into Bay will put two plus one blood cards on each. Other creature you control named blah blah blah. Okay. So that's fine. I'm going to play this out now because I want to play the other indulging partition next turn. No, which is a 5-5. Five, five. Interesting. These arena cards are becoming a thing. Hopefully he doesn't have another Battle of Pack Hunter in hand. Okay, he may just have a ramp through and Swing any dude out. Vigilance in reach. All these wonderful arena cards. We're gonna go for the gain four life option, because that's going to do a double trigger. I think we may get hit quite hard here. It's going to be nine damage. We're not going to block. Let's see if our opponent Orange Mage puts something else down or decides to kill one of our creatures. It's doing something. It's trying to figure something out. It's playing another spider. Okay. I 
really allow him to have two spiders. That's just kind of silly. Nothing we can really do there. We're going to take the nine again. However, I do think that uh, the food token is useful to him at this particular point. He will go to six. Making the pie was a perfect draw for us. There we go. So the Indulging Patrician, as you can see, can be very dangerous in this deck. Nice way to play it. Nice way to keep it hanging around. So long as you can keep doing that three life minimum, min, what, three life gain minimum per per your turn, with enough of those Indulging Patricians on the board, you can just suck your opponent dry. Okay, another round with our life skills deck. Used our indulging patricians in the previous game to great effect. Uh, the constant life gain of three each turn ensured that they triggered at the end of every turn, and there were two of them, so instead of only losing three life, our opponents lost six, which is really good. This is a nice opening hand. I like it, even though it's a pretty low curve, but that does mean we get to get things out pretty fast. Um, we will play the Scoured Barrens first. We will change our doggy. Although I must show you something I, I think is hysterical. So one of the worst, my, one of my least favorite pets, hello opponent, residual maker, is the um, the wooden Jace puppet. And I didn't know that you could do this, but with this particular hound, if you double click him, he eats the Jace puppet. <laughs> it's so cool. Um, okay, so let's do this, and let's do that, and let's do this. So we also have a Shadow Spear, my friend. And a Griffinary. I think we may be up against a bit of a mirror match here. Yep, definitely a mirror match going on. And keep the pressure up, sing with the sing, <laughs> swing with the silver mode cool. Is about to get shadow speared. So our opponent will get a griffin out of this particular attack. But he won't get an angel, that's for sure, and we'll take care of that. I'm not having I ain't having that. So he gains the four, he'll get a griffin. And the thing my bobby comes back. What we're gonna do right now is all attack. That's a big chunk of life for us. It's a big chunk of life away from our opponent, which is what we want to keep that Speaker of Heaven at bay. Clever. Equipping it to the token. That's good. Good damage. Bit of life gain. Nice, his is triggering beautifully. It's really, it's really working well for him or her residual maker. Um, I do feel we need to get rid of that airy though. It's 
see if he blocks. It's not going to. In that case, we'll do this. Cool. Okay, we're definitely getting rid of the Speaker of the Heaven. Never mind. Scratch that last. <laughs> definitely getting rid of that Bane Slayer Angel. Can't have that flying around in good grief. What do we what do we what do you think this is? Some kind of, you know, let's let the angels run amok situation. I don't think so. Okay. And that's all we really need to do there. Unfortunately, we've got no aerial threat right now. So our opponent is able to just keep smacking us in the face. Five. Oh, he's coming in with everything. Okay, we will block. Sure, nice. But even in watching this, you can see how our opponent is playing the exact same deck as us. So we need to stop him from getting to 27 life. That would be that would be a bad thing. Unfortunately, we're just not drawing the cards we need to get that happen. But this should help. have to keep up the pressure and we have to keep that life total as far down as we can except on his next turn our opponent is going to be able to make an angel Oh yeah, he can make that angel now if he wants to. Sure. And here comes an angel. Well played, opponent. And bake into a pie, very well played. We unfortunately just didn't draw anything useful whatsoever. So we're going to be done right here. But you also, you get a sense watching this game from our opponent who's playing the exact same deck as us, how you can play this deck with the right draw, obviously. But good game. Here we go with the last skills deck. We've had a win and a loss. The loss was good though because the loss was against a mirror, a mirror match. It was the same deck that just drew a lot better than we did. Um, got a lot of aerial threats out that we weren't able to cope with because we didn't draw any answers to those threats. But it does give you a sense of how well the deck can play when it draws. So so watch that second game. It's uh, It's good to do. This is a pretty decent hand. If we can get there undamaged, 
then these become very handy. Uh, obviously we want the airy and a veto would be great if we could draw a veto. We haven't drawn one yet. Oh, we're up against some knights, are we? Looks that way. We're gonna get hit for one. Ah, one, one, one. Oh. Okay, we're really not drawing what we need. Incoming. We draw another planes. Oh my word. Okay, we're flooding quite badly here. Um so I guess we do that. opponents having a good look at our indulging patrician there. Nice sleeves though. Worf worf. Dogs in the background. Opponent choosing not to attack. Okay, so that's something good for us. We'll put that down for sure. I don't think we attack. I think we simply do this. We gain four life. It triggers both. Corpse Knight choosing to play the adventure side of it. Draw card. Lose one life. Wow, we really are just flooding like crazy. Okay, so now... We'll swing with that one. Gain another four life to get another griffin. one because of the corpse knight. The Falmire knight having death touch. And using the life gain side of the smitten swords master. Okay, we have another creature who has lifelink that we can activate. Which is great. We are going to swing and swing. And turn. All depends on what he swings at us with. He can cast his Smitten Sword Master, but then he doesn't get to buff the Knight, which is exactly what he's planning on doing. I'm gonna pass and not block. Interesting. 
Now he's going to play a Swordmaster. And we'll get pinged for one from the Corpse Knight. He's looking at our Forester. Oh dear. Well, let's see who he chooses. He can choose any one of our creatures at this point. He or she, Tycon. Looks like he's moved on to the indulgent patrician. No, he's killing one of our flyers. Interesting. Not the choice I would have made. But then what do I know? Because all I seem to get is land. Go for it. Pick a non-creature, non-land card from my hand, buddy. Kind of hoping our opponent makes a mistake here and plays either one of his smitten sword masters out onto the board before attacks. But he's not going to. See if we block your buff. I think for now we just take the damage. Knight of the Ebon Legion is a great card. It is rotating out as is Corpse Knight as far as I know. Okay, we're going to put this little fella down. He's going to come in with some death touch. Let's dissuade those people from doing anything silly. Not too worried about the exiling of our graveyard. It's not like we get to bring stuff back anyway. Now we have our very own death touch. For as long as our opponent doesn't have direct removal. Humans get plus one, plus one. Okay. Great. Ah, hello there. That would be nice. Be nice to be able to put a veto on the board. If at all possible. Our opponent is pondering. We have a pondering opponent. Oh, this is the lava place. Look at this. Look at that. We made a crystal. 
and a doggy. And this one too. You can do this one as well. Look at that, we made a crystal! That's so cool! Oh, that's no good at all. But again, I think that that is the wrong choice. Unless he's just going to swing at us with the knight. But it doesn't matter now because the knight doesn't have the ability to get buffed. That's fine. get the life back. Okay. Could have used Vito more effectively there, to be perfectly honest. Because this is not a tap ability. That's fine. And that's fine. Guess to go find another knight. Or equipment card, but he's only got the one red menace. I don't think he's going to be... Oh, he's running Wintermoor Commando, hey? Interesting. Death Touch Human, he has... stuff, something or other. What? One attack, another target, and it's indestructible to limit turn. That's fine. So the coconut's gonna hit us a little bit, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. I think we're we're actually okay here. We're gonna take the five, six. Hold on. Plus three, plus three. We're going to four, four. So we'll gain four. He'll lose four. He'll go to seven. That's uh, three. It's just not enough. We're not going to block this turn. would have been enough. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, six. And that's the win. 
hope that was useful and informative to you guys who are thinking about what deck you should pilot at the Comic-Con Africa Easy Gaming Group Magic the Gathering Arena 2020 Championships. That was the Life Skills deck, the Black White deck. Um, if you have any other questions or other queries, please feel free to get hold of us via Ignite Your Spark or the Easy Gaming Group Facebook pages, as well as check out easygaminggroup.com for all prize pool and other information about the tournament. Uh, keep it locked here for more. But until then, Planeswalkers, peace.